October 31st, 2018. And just as I was figuring out what day of the month it is, I realized it's Halloween. So, happy Halloween to those who celebrate it. Um, I got some things I'm doing in the greenhouse here. Uh, had uh, had an awesome day today. All kinds of good things happening in, in the works. Um, got a bunch more of equipment from my friend Joe. Um, yeah, wow, all kinds of cool stuff from him. Uh, I'm not even going to go into all of it, but the one thing that I did want to show is something that he built. And uh, many of you have probably seen these on other uh, channels. I know Engineer775 built something similar to this. This is a copper coil uh, wrapped in a stovepipe and designed to capture heat from uh, your stove output pipe and uh, capture that into hot water. Um, he said it wasn't super efficient for uh, heating for the shower, but he said one of the design things that he would change right off the bat is take the sleeve out of the center because it's sleeved and let the copper coil be exposed directly to the wood smoke or stove exhaust and that would give a better delta T for heat capture. Uh, he also was using I think a garden hose or something like that so there's a significant flow rate through it and so you can only get so much heat so fast unless you have a really high difference between the temperature you're grabbing heat from and the place you're grabbing it to for lack of a better way to describe it. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so I'm really excited to have this. I think I am going to de-sleeve it at some point. I might try it without de-sleeving it initially and uh, hook it into the thermal mass system in some form or fashion. I very likely will use this as a convective loop and not put a pump to it and just let the rising heat actually do the water exchange. Uh, so maybe we'll get into that later in, uh, later in the season because right now things are really busy and they're just getting busier every day which is a really good thing but uh, things are busy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I came in here just to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to do here tonight. Uh, this thermal mass tank still has a little bit of oil residue in it. Uh, I put some uh, Ajax uh, detergent in there to uh, help uh, clean out that oil or emulsif emulsify that oil so that I can get it out. Uh, the thermal mass is sitting at about 82 degrees at the moment, so it's fairly warm. So while it's warm, sort of like dish water, I want to make another flush here. Um, the forecast for the overnight temperature low is supposed to be 50 degrees. So uh, with that thermal mass pot, I should have no trouble keeping temperature in here while I flush this and refill it with cold, fresh spring water. Uh, I checked the water temperature coming from the ram pump uh, just before I came out, and it looks like it's running around 49 degrees or 50 degrees. So uh, when I refill this, it's going to be a, a, a little over 30 degrees colder uh, than it is right now. So we'll be actually we'll be showing negative BTU storage on this tank, and um, I will try to remember to include a chart from that. Uh, from before and after so you can kind of see how much of a difference that makes um, anyway what I'm going to do I got a, uh, a two inch it's actually a suction line for a pump but uh, it should fit up to this fitting so I'm going to take the cap off of this I'm going to hook up the two inch fitting and we're going to dump flush all the water out of this tank and then I'm going to take the hose and the ram line and do a quick rinse to try and get most of the detergent out of there and uh, then we're going to start refilling this tank the Ram Reservoir is about 110 gallons, and this tank is about 275, so it'll take a little over two full reservoirs from the Ram to fill this. So I'll get close to the first half in one flush, and then after that it'll be a little bit slower. Um, but I should be able to refill it in four hours or so, maybe a little less because the reservoirs are full right now. Uh, anyway, I just thought I would uh, explain what I'm doing here and show this new piece of equipment because that's going to make an excellent video for the future and excellent upgrade for the greenhouse and we'll be uh, making the whole heating system more efficient by capturing more heat before it goes out the chimney. Um, so what I'll do is connect this up and then uh, we'll uh, start the dump. I'll show you that and then uh, I don't know, we'll see what else there is to shoot here video wise. Okay. Here we are. Uh, 
Yeah, you can tell this is a suction line because there's a suction strainer on it. No matter. Um, anyway, so we're hooked in. Ram Reservoir is sitting right chock full at the moment. Uh, one last thing before we start here because we don't want to burn power on this pump for no reason. And we don't want to rob heat from this thermal mass while we're doing this changeover. So we're going to go right over here and pop... Uh-oh. I need to put a new connector on that. We're going to pop the breaker off of that or pop the terminal off of there. So that pump is disabled now. And we're going to go ahead and let her rip. Uh, and let the warm water flood ensue. Remember that's about 82 degrees. Thick, cooling dish water. <laughs> All right, there you go. So we're dumping her. And uh, I think you'll see comes down real fast. Can't remember, I think two inch line by gravity, low pressure gravity moves about 40 or 50 gallons a minute. Might be as little as 30, but uh, a lot of water. Uh, you can see why I keep the cap on this reservoir, because if I ever mistakenly open that valve, this greenhouse would be in six inches of water before I knew it hit me. And if the thermal mass is hotter, <laughs> get really warm and steamy in here anyway uh, we're dumping we'll go from there right we're about a minute and a half in I would guess and uh, already we have a river <laughs> running out of the greenhouse like a river <laughs> yeah flooding right on down <laughs> Just to give you some idea of how much water that really is. That was pretty quick. There she goes. And here's a tank of gurgling. With the exception of a few drops of water, that's it. She's completely empty. Alright, she's completely empty. I've disconnected the hose, replaced the cap. Uh, this corner was sitting without any support, so I added a couple of bricks just to give it a little extra support. Don't want too much weight sitting on that corner with no support. So we're ready for refill. So now for the long, arduous task of refilling. <laughs> well, actually, it's pretty easy. Let gravity do the work. Let the water do the thinking, so to speak. Anyway, uh, so we're refilling, and uh, this time is going to fly for you and for me. I'm going to have to check back every so often. So for now, uh, I'll clip off when I get it refilled, I'll jump back in. In the meantime, uh, I think this might be a good place to stick the charts up so you can see uh, the BTU and temperature changes. So I think I'll do that right here, and then you can pass the time easily. So I told the ram pump to go ahead and send it. Thanks, Larry the Enticer. And uh, meanwhile, I'm uh, relighting the stove here. Even though it's cool out, or not that cool out, fairly warm out, uh, the thermal mass pot I think is down to around 90 or so. Uh, hot average at 88 and a half. So, yeah. So, uh, there's not a tremendous amount of heat in it. And so, in order to compensate, because this is going to be full of very cold water, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the fire going and uh, that'll compensate for this. And also we can be building heat in the bank here. And uh, once this is refilled, we'll start pumping some of that heat right over and get it traded out before we get back into cold weather so we don't have to ramp the stove up real hot 
uh, when it gets cold again, we'll have a, a thermal mass base back. So uh, that's what's going on meanwhile. We have ignition. And we have liftoff. So we're up to here. It's been maybe 10 minutes. Okay, many chores have gone by, but not a tremendous amount of time yet. And let's see, we're sitting at over 125 gallons. That means we've dumped the reservoir. We've been coming direct from the ram pump for a bit. So she's filling. Um, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not. Maybe there's a better angle here. Better angle here. Uh, I'll just run my hand on it. You can see my hand's wet. So condensation is very cold. Uh, I think it's around 50 degrees or so coming in right now. Uh, but we'll take a look at the chart here. Anyway, uh, it's filling, um, the stove is running and heating the thermal mass here. It's nice and comfortable in here, uh, pretty warm. Uh, turn my light off so you can see. Yeah, uh, west low temp is at 70, west high at 77. So yeah, it's around 70, 75 in here. Real comfortable. Um, I guess we'll also look at, oh, look at that. Uh, the average, <laughs> scrolling too fast, the average for the big thermal mass that's filling is 56 degrees, so it's actually even taken out a little bit of uh, warmth just from the air in here so far, so that's nice. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough for now. We'll let that keep filling. I'm uh, back out to set up for a new project, which will add to this channel tremendously, I think. Um, I think I'm going to hold off and tell you about that in a separate video. So, see, me had an idea hit me as I'm refilling. Decided to put the ram pump output directly into the input side of the coil so we'll actually be filling with warm water. It'll be heated on its way through the pot and into the tank. <laughs> I wish I'd have thought of that sooner. Uh, we're about half full. Uh, but like I said, I will share charts at the end of this. Well, I did a video about uh, hooking the shower up to this uh, a day or two ago. Um, and I don't have the reservoir upper reservoir full, so we're not quite at full flow here. But this is direct delivery, <laughs> direct delivery, direct delivery from the ram pump uh, through the hot coil to the shower, and that water is actually a perfect shower temperature, nice and warm. So. Uh, I just thought I'd give a demonstration. I know I kind of explained how it worked, but I never really showed. I really showed it. So here it is working. All right, we're going to go back to filling the tank, and that's going to make our thermal mass nice and warm. Okay, after a couple of minutes, the water flow stabilized, and we're filling almost the entire shower head. Uh, and that water was so nice and warm, I couldn't resist it. So I took a quick shower, but. Uh, now we'll go back to filling the tank, and that water is nice and warm. That's at least 95 degrees, so that'll uh, fix our thermal mass loss pretty quickly if I'll uh, stop yammering on and put the water back to the tank. Okay, so I showed you the shower in operation. Uh, I guess I should just show you the coil quick for my newer viewers and subscribers who haven't seen the coil. This is a brewing coil uh, for cooling uh, beer wort. Um, it's about 65 bucks on Amazon. Comes with the garden hose adapter fittings on it. Very handy. 
and uh, it's hung up with a piece of copper wire on this side so that we capture all the heat from the top of the pot. If we were to go on the bottom of the pot, we would capture the heat from the bottom and the top due to stratification would stay hot and that would be heat that we were unable to transfer over to the big thermal mass tank. So, uh, currently our water is coming in from the ram pump through the greenhouse port. It's connected to the normal output of the circulator pump and run through the black hose into the coil, through the coil, out of the coil, and through this delivery line which goes back to the tank. So we're preheating the water directly from the ram pump on its way into the tank and in the future when I do tank flushes that is exactly how I'll do this. That's uh, really the smart way to do it. So I think I've covered everything. Uh, I'm tired. I gotta get something to eat and hit the sack. I got another long day tomorrow. Uh, thanks to my viewers and subscribers. Uh, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.